training adventures with Patty and Quinn. So we left you with the last video on the very first introduction to the lead. We followed that up with the very first time we put the lead on the dog and just asked them to walk with us. We didn't put any major expectations on them other than just to get them to walk nicely to our side. So we spent the last couple weeks working on that and five to 10 minutes max per day, maybe a few sessions per day is all we've done on the lead. In between time, the lead is off and we still go out for our exploration walks with Patty and Quinn. But when we do have the lead on, we've steadily increased the expectations on both the dogs uh, in terms of when the lead is on and we ask them to heal, that they walk nicely to heal. So we've done that for the last couple of weeks and that has progressed really, really well. So what we're going to show you tonight is the introduction to formal heel work. And I'm just going to explain the terrain. What, what you want to look for is some piece of ground that has little or no scent. And what you can see is we're here on my driveway, which is gravel. No scent there. And the reason for that is we don't want the dogs to drop their nose down on the ground and become ground snippers while we're trying to reinforce our heel work. So we're right here on a nice piece of gravel. You can use a sidewalk, you can use the Walmart parking lot, any place that you can find that's preferably out of grass for this first couple sessions so that they're not inclined to drop that nose on the ground. The second thing I want to mention is the position of your lead. Uh, we use slip leads here as I've explained. And what you want to do if you've got a slip lead is position that lead as high up on the neck as you can. You really want it right behind the, their ears. And the reason for that is that's the most sensitive part on the dog uh, in the neck area. And you'll have to use very, very little pressure if you need to correct your dog if it's in that position. If it's down here, just above their shoulders, just imagine a horse with a harness on, they're able to really put a lot of weight into that, uh, which makes your correction that much more difficult because they can lean into your correction and it really doesn't mean anything. So a uh, little tip for you, get your lead up as high as you can on that dog, preferably right up behind the ears, and then you'll see you have to use very, very little pressure when you need to correct your dog. Okay. So we have little Quinn here. We're going to bring Patty out next so everybody gets a chance to see how both dogs are performing. And uh, I'm going to show you what we're up to. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get his attention. Quinn, Quinny, Quinn, good lad. And we're going to tell him, heel, heel. can see he's walking nicely to my side he's not pulling on the lead he's not falling behind if he gets a little bit ahead all I've got to do is just put a little pressure on that lead and, he, and that's the correction and you can see that's really nice good the other thing I'll mention is tail position sit when you're healing your dog the tail position should be horizontal or down if your dog's tail is up here like this flying around, that should be a clear indicator to you as the handler that the dog really isn't paying attention to you. So understand your dog's body language and what he's telling you. If it's here or down, that's perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. Okay, so we're just going to do a couple inside turns now. Good boy. When he does it right, I, I, I praise him. Good boy. Good lad. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. And we have worked in our sits over the last couple weeks as well. So you can see that he's sitting really nicely on command. We don't have to put any pressure on the lead. He clearly understands what that means. So he's doing quite well. We're going to go bring Patty out next for you so you can have a look at him. Okay, so now we have Patty with us and you're going to get a chance to see his heel work in just a second. But I thought I'd just take, while well, I had the opportunity to mention, we're it's the middle of July and this is late in the day and uh, it goes without saying but we'll just mention it here that this time of year especially with black dogs or any dogs really be mindful of the heat you can see here we're trying to work in the shade as much as we can we keep our sessions very very short so we can keep the dogs as cool as absolutely possible so just be mindful of that when you're out working your dog early mornings late afternoons into the evenings in the shade is always the best if you can so all right, so we have little Patty here. Same scenario as with, with Quinn. Um, everything is set up exactly the same. So we're just gonna take off and see what he's 
what he's up to today. Patty, 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 good boy, heel. to drop his head a little bit there so I'm just gonna bump it with the lead tell him no good lad sit good sit good sit okay now we're our outside now we're gonna do some inside squares lad good boy good deal good deal You see his tail position is nice and horizontal, exactly where we want, so that tells us he's listening. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Now to finish this up, we might just take a longer walk right down the driveway if they're healing really nicely. If not, if you find yourself struggling, the dog getting a little ahead or a little behind, keep your session short and do lots of squares. Uh, squares will correct that heel work quicker than anything. Um, rather than just taking off walking in a straight line for a long, long ways. Keep your session short and do lots of, lots of little squares will help you out quite a bit. So there you go. You can see both boys are coming right along with their heel work. Um, they're beginning to understand what that means when we tell the command to them. They're coming right into position. So we'll continue on with this and uh, we'll be back with you with the next video.